Practice makes perfect, but only if we're practicing the right things. In 2022, there's so much instruction on YouTube, literally everywhere, it gets rather confusing. What things should we watch and what training aids should we use? There's so many training aids out there as well, from wacky to wonderful. You may be using one to fix your slice when it's actually the wrong method. I'm gonna talk you through some really important ones that can help all types of golfers. If you're looking to fix your slice or your hook, this won't be the case. But if you're looking to increase your swing speed, tempo or ball striking, carry on watching. Ball striking is the first thing we're going to talk about. Quite a hard thing to improve if you don't really understand your swing. But if you understand your tempo, your sequencing and your transition, it can improve it a lot more than you think. And so that's why we're going to talk about lag shots. <music> Lagshot is a brand created by Gary Guerrero. I love the stuff that he does. He does a lot of things online, so check out his socials. And the Lagshot is one of the best things that I've seen from him. This Lagshot swing trainer works by having an extremely flexy shaft, more flexy than anything else you'll find in today's market, but you can actually hit it and practice on the range as well. By being able to hit this on the range and practice with this, it means you're actually able to transition and sequence your swing a lot better than before. As I've said, this thing is extremely flexy as you can see. So it's not an easy thing to do, trust me. I've had this for about eight months now and I still haven't really got the hang of it. What I would recommend doing is actually hitting this on the range for about 20 to 25 shots and then hitting about five shots with your normal golf clubs. This ingrains muscle memory and does make it a little bit easier to hit those pesty seven irons. The lag shots come in different options. I've got the lag shot XL here for the taller fellas and I've also got the driver and then I've also got the sand wedge. Out of all of these options, I would really only recommend the seven iron. The driver is still pretty useful, but it's not as flexy as the seven iron. I really think we should make it as tough as possible for these options. Just the seven iron alone does come in under hundred pounds. So a pretty fair price. And that's why I wouldn't really recommend getting them all because it is quite expensive and they all kind of offer the same thing. There are other things that are vaguely similar to this in today's market and other brands have caught on and have done some very similar things. The Orange Whip or the Skills Flex trainer that I've seen on Amazon is a similar type of model with a very flexy shaft, but you can't actually hit golf balls with this. I've got this as well with me today and I have used it before my rounds when I don't have that long to warm up. Again, a very helpful thing to use when you're warming up, but I wouldn't think it's as helpful as the leg shot. I think being able to ingrain some sort of training aids in your muscle memory by actually being able to swing some golf clubs with them or just use them and then hit a golf club is really useful. And that brings me on to my next topic. This is still under the lines of ball striking, but it's actually to do with your release and the most essential move in the golf swing. So let's talk about gem. Gem, standing for golf's essential move, is a brand new training aid for 2022. I first laid my eyes on this in 2021, just in some prototypes up in Scotland, and I was amazed by how easily it fixed my swing. It focuses on as it says in the title, the essential move, which is kind of just towards the 90 degree option on the backswing, and the same again on the follow through. You can kind of tell initially by the packaging and what it is that it is its first copy. It is quite raw, which I do really enjoy. But what you do have to do when assembling it is putting it onto your golf club itself. It's just a few pieces of metal and you guys might be confused looking at it thinking, how is this a training aid? But the little ball that you can see in the packaging is very heavy. By putting it on that little pole that you have, it has a very heavy weighting. And what it can do with it is it really feels when you're swinging it that actually heavy weighting on your release. Why is this important? Well, not only is the release really important, but the line that you get from the shaft, you can make sure that your takeaway up to that 90 degree angle is perfect because it points down at the ground, then you can turn it around and it's completely neutral. And that's the same for the follow through. You can actually hit balls with this, but only with the smaller feature when the ball is closer towards the shaft. I actually really like it when it's the longest feature because it feels a lot more exaggerated. And when you're trying to ingrain muscle memory as exaggerated as possible, I think is really important. Almost it makes it quicker to actually put it into your normal swing. What I've been trying to do, sometimes I'm a bit lazy, but what I've been trying to do is by doing this for about 20 or 30 swings without a golf ball, and then instantly switching over to a club and then hitting about three or four shots with it. It's a long process, absolutely. Just by, let's say, half an hour session, you're not gonna fix anything, but it gives you a really good idea of the optimal release pattern the golf swing should be. 
I think this is a really undervalued product. There are some improvements to be made as it is its first copy. I'd really like if they did something similar to Lagshot and actually make a golf club that had the actual features on it. So you could just swing it and not actually worry about where you actually have to put it on because sometimes it's a little bit difficult. But I think this training aid itself has actually helped me more than any other training aid that I've tried so far this year. By really being able to understand that backswing and follow through, it's helpful for your chipping, for your iron play, literally everything apart from your putting. Before we go on to some other products by some other brands, I think the most simplest training aid that we have, that some people don't use, is just a simple alignment aid when we're practicing. So many people when I watch them play golf are lined up 80 or 90 degrees left, playing that out to in swing path and playing the slice. Trust me, that's not good for your game long term. By using a simple training aid that you can get off Amazon, or if you're lazy like me, just placing your club down on the ground is one of the most helpful things that you can do. This means that when you're going out and practicing, you know 100% that you're aiming at that 150 yard marker rather than guessing it and actually aiming 30 yards right. This should be a staple for every single amateur golfer to use an alignment aid when they're practicing. And this isn't just for 150, 200 yard shots. Even when you're chipping, make sure you're aiming to the right thing because chipping is really important too and helps you get up and down. So we've covered ball striking, transition, sequencing, and things like that, which every golfer can improve. One thing every golfer can improve as well is their swing speed. A really interesting topic for me, and I will be doing a video later in the year on this, but swing speed itself is something that has become extremely important for professional and amateur golfers. And there are ways to improve this. About two years ago, I delved into this with super speed training, with these super speed training sticks. I'm still doing it, don't worry but I think it's really important if you guys do want to try and improve your swing speed. It can factually improve your swing speed if you do really use it and utilize it in the correct way in just six weeks. I did that in 2020 and gained about six miles an hour club head speed, extremely impressive. I was very apprehensive at first, but trust me, it does work. They are rather expensive and also you can get a little launch monitor as well. So it goes into about 400 pounds or so. But if you think you could gain two to three clubs in distance in the off season, just by doing this and also a little bit of exercise, that's really important. Would you rather be hitting a 9-9 into the green rather than a 6 iron? I think we all know the answer to that. I'll be doing a video on this over the next few months, so stay tuned for that. But if you want to check out my previous video by Superspeed, I'll put a link just somewhere around here as well, as it was extremely eye-opening. Swing speed, ball striking, all the things that I've mentioned are really important, but sometimes we don't actually know what to practice. If we're shooting 95 on a Saturday and thinking, oh, it's down to my putting, you're guessing. How do we actually know? Well, there are brands that really help us with that. Two of these are ShotScope and Arcos. Slightly different from each other, ShotScope is a GPS brand that use watches, range finders, but they do shot tracking by putting a little thing in the butt of the clubs, which means that after your round, you can see where you went wrong. They have strokes gain features, and this is similar to Arcos too, but Arcos isn't a GPS device. You just have a little device that you put in the butt of the clubs, a really, really good app as well that helps you improve. So rather than finishing around when you shoot 95 thinking, okay, I'll practice my putting, it tells you what to practice. It tells you where you went wrong and then tells you how to improve. I've been using this for the last year and a half. I've flirted with ShotScope and Arcos, and I will be doing a video with Arcos in the next few months as well, giving it a long-term review. So I'm not gonna to show too many features of either of them now, but I will say, similar to the gem, this has really helped my game in different ways. Before I used ShotScope or Arcos, I always thought I was a really bad putter and everything else was fine. By being able to see my shot tracking, my putting is bad, but everything else needs a little bit of work as well. It's a lot more balanced than I thought, so it means rather than just solely focusing and getting down in the dumps over my putting, there's a lot more to work on. My ball striking, my short game, those are two things that were a lot worse than I thought they'd be. So it means that I can now tackle them all head on rather than just focusing on one. These are all really important for our swing, but there's one big thing we haven't talked about, and that is putting. Putting is half of the golf game, maybe more for our three putters. How do we actually focus on this and improve? There are a lot of training aids out there, but I actually don't think we need any. We just need two little objects that we can get in a pro shop. Just on the putting green now, as I said, there are many good and bad training aids for putting. Some good for indoors, some good for outdoors. We're gonna focus on the outdoor ones here because I don't really think you need any. Indoors in winter, it's good to get a putting mat. It's good to get something like putt out as well. Something that really helps you for your distance control, for those smooth putts, those center perfect weighted putts. Really like putt out, that's what I'd recommend through the winter months. In the summer though, I think it's more drills than anything that will help. But there can always be the case of you having a putting stroke that's like a figure of eight. That's not good for your game. Because if it's not an ideal putting stroke, you're not gonna be hitting the middle of the club face, getting true roll every single time. All you really need for that, two tees. 
like what Tiger Woods did in one of his famous drills. Just chuck two tees down on the ground, put them into the green at about putter's length distance and start slow. Practice some four foot putts. Make sure you're hitting the middle of the club every single time, getting it right in the middle, getting that pure roll that we all need. When I say practice this, I mean practice this. A hundred putts from four foot, then hit about 10 without the tees. Move on to six foot. You really don't need anything that's worth 50 or 100 pounds for this. Just two little tees, put them down. It's extremely useful. Guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video today. It was really fun and it has been really fun over the last few years testing out various different training aids. I've omitted a few because I don't think some are very good, but the ones that I've included, I really do think can help improve your game. I'm sure though, I've missed a few. So let me know down in the comments which training aids do you use because there are literally hundreds. And I'm sure there are some that work for you and can work for some other people watching this video. So let everyone know down in the comments. Let's get involved, let's help the community out. Guys, if you are new to Golf Magic, smash that subscribe button and leave a like for this video as well. Let me know what you wanna see next in our best of videos. There's a lot that I can still do. I kinda of wanna do some value golf balls and value golf clubs, but let me know down in the comments. That's it for me today, guys. I'll catch you in the next video.